Okay, Sam, you've just given uh, a talk to Bruce's Brunch about giving uh, what you can. Can you tell us just a little bit about that organisation? Sure. So, Giving What We Can, uh, we're an organisation that uh, evaluates the um, effectiveness of various charities, and in particular charities focusing on global poverty and global health. Uh, and then we also try and build a community of members uh, around those charities, so uh, trying to get people to uh, commit to give a proportion of their income, that's 10% uh, uh, of their income, to those charities. So uh, basically looking for where the best opportunities to give are, and then getting people to donate to them. And is there a reason why it's 10%? Um, 10%, uh, it's an interesting figure. It basically, it represents something that I think uh, a lot of people in the developed world who obviously have uh, a fair amount uh, of uh, disposable income, particularly uh, uh, sort of compared to people in the developing world, um, I guess it's it's an amount that people can commit to. Uh, it's an amount that people with uh, not that much reduction in their their quality of life uh, will be able to to meet. This is something that's manageable. It's something that you can do for a, a, a proportion of your life, and, and we're we're hoping to get people to pledge for uh, the rest of their working lives. Okay, and you're here in Balliol College. Is that there's a link to Balliol, isn't there? Yes, historically, yes. yeah. So so giving what we can was founded back in about 2008, uh, and it was actually a fellow of Balliol uh, College. Uh, a uh, guy by the name of Toby Ord, who was um, was also an, uh, an Australian expat, and and he uh, was was looking for information about various charities. He'd uh, he'd read uh, some works by the moral philosopher Peter Singer. Uh, Peter Singer um, uh, wrote an essay uh, back in 1976 called Famine, Affluence, and Morality, and that basically advocated that um, there was probably a, a moral imperative uh, upon people in the developed world to uh, think about the fact that they had a lot of um, uh, extra income relative to those in the developing world uh, and then it's probably uh, morally um, incumbent on, upon them to uh, to make uh, donations to charity uh, in order to alleviate suffering uh, in uh, in those parts of the world where there is a lot of suffering. So it is that kind of leading the good life for you as well as for others I mean kind of because you know at times people talk about the happiness of giving, being involved, of actually being part of a bigger community. Yeah, certainly, and and that's one of the things that Giving What We Can tries to do is to build that community. Uh, we're we're particularly interested in making sure that people know that it's not just them, it's not just uh, their their one uh, lone voice in the wilderness um, uh, working against an insurmountable problem. And if you look at the um, the, the statistics that relate to global poverty, uh, sometimes it does feel a bit overwhelming, and that um, to, to try and tackle that would be uh, just uh, incredibly difficult. But um, what uh, what is really good about having a community is knowing that you're in this together and knowing that uh, there are people who are working together and, and that 400 million figure, I mean that's just what we've um, raised from our current membership base and, and we're hoping to grow that. One of the interesting things here, it was our students who've been very keen because we tend to adopt a charity a term yeah. here and they wanted to make sure that the money was efficient so they've chosen and suggested it went to the Against uh, Malaria Foundation yeah, and it was actually using your research which actually made them kind of say this is because we don't have much to give, but we want to give something which will have an effect. Yeah, that's right. So it was great to tap into your yeah, work absolutely. really on this. And, and I think that's that's one of the, the really valuable things that we, we do have is that we can um, say to donors, you you have uh, various opportunities and the uh, Against Malaria Foundation is one of the ones that we uh, um, we recommend. We also uh, recommend uh, a couple of charities that do uh, deworming, so um, that will uh, we'll, we'll, uh, cure people of intestinal parasites for uh, for a period of time and then uh, also a charity that um, helps with uh, nutrition supplementation so uh, fortifies uh, nutrients so that children grow up and, and yeah it's called Project Healthy Children and uh, it's for you know reducing iron deficiency, uh, iodine deficiency that sort of thing. Can I ask a, a, a kind of perhaps more awkward question how, how are you guys funded? How, how does that work and how efficient are you, do you feel? Well, yeah, I mean, we... we so you're a charity? Can, yeah, we are a charity. So uh, we're part of uh, what's called the Centre for Effective Altruism. So uh, effective altruism being a, a term that's sometimes applied to this idea of not wanting to just do good, but just to do uh, the most amount of good you can for, a, for, for the resources that you have available. And so there are various ways of thinking about that. Uh, you could think about how you might do the most good with your career. And uh, should you uh, do the most good by uh, working for a charity? Or should you earn a lot of money and employ three people to work for a charity? 
So that's that's one of the, the interesting things that, that uh, some of the research has, has shown up. Uh, and so th there are various ways of, of thinking about this. Um, and uh, so the Centre for Effective Altruism is, the, is our parent organisation. They're a registered charity. And so, yeah, we're, we're funded by, like, like many charities, we're funded by donors. Uh, and uh, we're fundraising at the moment, actually. Um, but uh, typically we do ask people to donate to our, our recommended charities because that's where we think most of the good is going to be, be done. Uh, we did recently do a, an impact evaluation and we calculated that it, it's actually quite likely that we're, we're very uh, effective at moving money to these, these charities. So, for example, uh, we recently calculated that it could be as high as uh, $60 uh, moved to effective charities um, the, for every dollar that we spend ourselves. So, uh, yeah, 60 to 1 return on investment seems like a, a fairly, um, yeah, it's a pretty good return on investment um, if you were asking uh, someone in the, the financial world, they'd, they'd tell you to invest in that. So we think uh, we can stand by those numbers and we've shown that we're uh, an incredibly effective organisation. So how can people get in contact with you and know a little bit more about giving what you can? So probably the easiest way is just to get online and search for giving what we can or go to givingwhatwecan.org. Uh, that is our website that's uh, not only got uh, information about the charities that we recommend but talks about us, about our history, about um, how we uh, go through our uh, evaluations of charities and uh, we try and be as, as open and transparent and as um uh, as sort of forthcoming as possible about uh, all this stuff because uh, that's what we expect from the charities that we recommend uh, and um, so people can go to the website, they can find out um, uh, whatever they uh, want uh, and then they can also get in touch with us if they've got any further questions that aren't answered, uh, aren't answered by that. So um, yeah, givingwhatwecan.org is the, uh, the website. Brilliant, thank you so much. No sir. worries, thanks very much for having me on.